most people are aware of the crystal skulls, the best of which hidden away within the Smithsonian. Perfectly carved from solid pieces of crystal, their origins, purpose, or indeed possible function remain a mystery. What many are not aware of, however, is the astonishing archaeological discoveries which have recently been made in Spain. A remarkable set of crystal weapons found within megalithic tombs at a site known as Valencina de la Concepci. Archaeologists investigating the site have uncovered a vast array of crystal arrowheads, an exquisite crystal dagger blade, along with a number of other artifacts. Found within an enormous megalithic structure, constructed out of large slabs of slate, the resting place of at least 25 once clearly very important individuals, along with their extraordinary smorgasbord of grave goods. Included within the finds was another mystifying number of shrouds, claws made of tens of thousands of perforated amber beads. Just how they managed to fashion these mysterious crystal weapons remains unclear. A number of investigators have remarked that great skill must have been required to produce these unique rock crystal weapons. The rock crystal dagger blade, in particular, was found in the upper level of the structure. Its morphology is not unheard of in the Iberian Peninsula, although, however, all the samples recorded anywhere else were made from flint and not crystal. Furthermore, and perhaps even more intriguing, is the fact that the crystal is of unknown origins, detailed and thorough analysis being unable to successfully pinpoint the original whereabouts of this magnificent crystal. Given the technical skill and difficulties involved in creating the objects from such a material, rather than simple flint, their purpose, and indeed manufacture, has been a tough thing for academia to explain. However, it is unlikely that any funded academic would presume, like we can, that these highly advanced, perfectly manufactured weapons could in fact be far earlier artifacts, created by a civilization with far greater capabilities than those of known prehistory. Supporting this hypothesis is that, despite these objects being found relatively frequently within the burials of the 4th and 3rd millennia BC, Crystal implements disappear from later funerary monuments within the early Bronze Age, a quote, truly striking development, researchers say. As it would seem, the use of this raw material as grave goods was almost entirely abandoned, end quote. The reason for this remains a mystery. However, is it possible, as mentioned, that these were merely a discovered relic of a bygone era, thus making their availability limited? This would therefore make it appear as though there was a sudden halt in their mysterious and unexplained manufacture, while all the while, in reality, the manufacturing of these objects occurred at a different time in our history. The Nimrod Castle, which translates as Castle of the Large Cliff, is an astonishing ancient fortress. And although this awe-inspiring site has predictably been dated to the medieval era. We feel that due to the many anomalous megalithic blocks within its construction, it is far older than this and undoubtedly a remnant left by a highly advanced civilization, now unfortunately lost to history, this due to academia's funded and often deliberate ignorance. Many of the oldest blocks present within the structure, for example, are all upwards of 10 tons, with some of the heaviest recognized as being over 40 tons in weight. How modern curators and academics alike can attest to these ruins having been created by our tremendously less capable medieval ancestors, we feel, is preposterous. According to those in the so-called No, the fortress was created from scratch during the Ayyubid dynasty placed within the 12th and 13th centuries. The dynasty undoubtedly existed, this we do not deny. We also do not disagree with the posit that the dynasty ruled large parts of the Middle East during these centuries. However, we suspect that, just like the many other unexplainable ancient advanced ruins found throughout the world, these more recent ruling ancestors 
and indeed the large array of ancient artifacts which they left, creating an archaeological legacy, has been used to conveniently date and explain this miraculous structure away, avoiding the controversial truth which is clear for all to see. The fortress is situated on the southern slopes of Mount Hermon, upon a ridge that rises over 2,600 feet above sea level overlooking the Golan Heights. We feel that due to its strategical location, much of the structure was rebuilt upon. This task completed with the purpose of guarding a major access route. We believe that upon the leader of this dynasty, Al-Aziz Uthman, discovering the enormous, impenetrable polygonal masonry still in existence within the walls of the site, that were left by a people who, at some point within antiquity, mysteriously vanished. This leader made the logical decision to build upon the impressive remnants, with these walls being reused, utilized for a more modern fortress. This second phase predictably made with far smaller blocks, and thus can be easily explained as medieval architecture. A fortress could have indeed been its original purpose, this due to its strategically placed location. Indeed, other ancient, advanced, seemingly impenetrable fortresses can be found in other places within the world, such as Sacsayhuaman. Although its true grandeur, or its initial advanced builder's intention for the structure, may take tremendous, meticulous, alternative research to eventually unravel. Furthermore, intriguingly, the enigmatic yet highly recognizable shape of this initial stonework is also present at another site, possibly a number of other sites, although in particular within Jerash, a site currently claimed as Roman. Who built the Fortress of Nimrod? How can academia claim that this site was built by the Ayyubid dynasty, while another ruin, unquestionably constructed with the same form of megalithic blocks, seemingly dating for the same era, be that of the Romans? We feel that these two sites, each containing the same building features, yet claimed as completely different civilizations work, both placed within our more recent history, yet in vastly different centuries is clear evidence of academic fallacy, evidence of their explanative contradictions when it comes to the many currently controversial ancient ruins of Earth. Nimrod Fortress is yet another jewel in the crown of a civilization currently lost to history. It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Our mission upon our channel is to compile and present enough evidence of the existence of a past, highly capable, technologically advanced ancient civilization that once flourished here upon our planet, that it not only proves their existence beyond reasonable doubt, but vindicates all those who have either lost careers, funding or worse, just for telling the truth. Our intention is to display to the world that a civilization once lived here on our planet that not only mastered the art of stone masonry, but quarried, moved, and built with stones of such gigantic weights, not only do their activities escape modern explanation, but have been deliberately ignored, covered up, and denied by an academia who claim to have all the answers. There are many areas of the planet which still possess many of these compelling artifacts, not only supporting our premise and conviction, but baffle all who try to explain them. And although, predictably, rarely shared by academics the world over, one of these ancient places is known to the modern man as Italy. Seemingly littered with not only polygonal masonry, ancient pyramidal structures, multi-ton lintels and archways, but contains countless other compelling, extremely ancient yet surviving features which not only indicates the existence of this past civilization, but have been investigated by a number of alternative antiquarians throughout the eras, who, after in-depth analysis, have come to predictably startling conclusions in regards to their age and, indeed, possible origins. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient sites, one of which being the Cyclopean Wall, which still surrounds the ancient Acropolis of Alatre. 
and indeed the astonishing polygonal masonry which makes up the apparently Greek-constructed Necromantion, a place not only proven due to the polygonal architecture to undoubtedly predate this academic explanation, but also, thanks to our own study of the site, has fingerprints left by a tool within the main chamber said to be the passageway to the underworld of Hades that we have identified and linked to a number of other unexplained sites found throughout the world. However, this coverage of the Italian relics we have so far explored is but a fragment of what is actually hidden among the winding streets and rolling hills of Italy. Alternative researchers, most notably Giuseppe Lugli, have carried out studies of the unexplained polygonal techniques, which can still be found existing within Italy. The ancient fortifications and polygonal walls, which were researched and initially noted by Giuseppe, include Alatri, Norma, Arpino, Assini, Saracena Gate, Cosa, Alba Fusens, Segni, Pigra, Blera, Lazio, Bomarzo, Latium, San Felice Circio, Latina, Chiusi, Etruria, Toscania, Vitrala, Viterbo, Monte Albano, Sovana, Toscana, Nardo di Pace, Tirna, Lago di Pitiluca, Orvieto, Umbria, Tuscany, Marema, Sorano, Syracuse, Sicily, Val di Saviore, Serviteri, Savignano, and so on. As Richard Cassero puts it, a modern researcher of these enigmatic ruins, quote, The countryside around Rome is littered with relics of a past more or less remote. One feels almost a continuity there between the ancient and the modern world, with the ancient Roman ruins being almost a familiar presence, as if part of the natural landscape. Yet one also finds there remains of a much older and mysterious past. Massive cyclopean walls encircle towns and villages, their stones darkened by the passing of centuries and millennia. One can never get used to them, so strange they are in their interlocking geometries and so different from the familiar contours of Roman and medieval walls. They loom as a relic from an entirely different past, of which we know almost nothing." End quote. And as mentioned, although we have only personally covered the Cyclopean walls surrounding Alatri, similar ancient fortifications can seemingly be found enclosing countless other ancient ruins all over Italy. The small towns of Sutri, Emilia, Pelestrina, Ferentino, Segni, Cesa, Veroli, and Arpino, all in the province of Frosinone, Norba, Cori, and Circe, Cortona, Cuma in the province of Latina, Emilia in nearby Umbria, as far as Ancedonia, Orbitello, and Roselle in Tuscany, and Alba Fucens in Abruzzo, are entirely surrounded by Cyclopean walls surviving to this day in various states of preservation, an indication of a fear these people had of some form of outsider. The stone walls, some of which constructed from truly gigantic blocks, each weighing many tons, are as finely fitted together as the many other mortarless ruins found elsewhere the world over, such as within ancient Peru. But it is their near-impossible acute angles and interlocking corners that caused the greatest of amazement, that just like the polygonal masonry found all over the world, was created as if each stone was individually carved to be a piece of a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. These features, along with their gigantic scale, are relics not only overlooked by the thousands of people who visit Italy each year, but, as we have previously discussed, are overwhelming evidence of an ancient civilization far more capable than any of the well-studied ancestors that academia claim as the original builders. These remnants are undoubtedly evidence of a past civilization that were not only vastly more proficient in masonry than even the modern man, but were also obsessed with building enclosed fortifications, as if to avoid some form of outside invader or possible natural threat. Who built ancient Italy? Why did they build with such focus on fortification? How old are these relics? 
we feel that due to their inexplicable nature, they are undoubtedly relics left by a now lost civilization, yet continue to be ignored by an academia who deny this people's past existence. Regardless of these denials, we find ancient Italy highly compelling. Many inventions found throughout the world have their origins set in the Far East. Many machines that different nations claim as their own can often be found to have primitive traces of development many centuries earlier within China, and our next artifact is no exception. Dating back over 2,000 years, this rare and enigmatic piece of once very high technology can only be seen as a demonstration of their superior ingenuity. It seems the invention of the first seismoscope can be traced back to 132 AD, when a Chinese inventor called Chang Heng perfected a device remarkably accurate at detecting earthquakes, even from afar. Although the ancient Chinese did not fully understand the cause of earthquakes, they did see it as very important to keep track of such events, perceiving these disturbances with cosmic yin and yang. It was, therefore, important for the Chinese emperor to be alerted of any earthquakes occurring anywhere in their kingdom. Chang's ingenious seismoscope was almost six feet across and made of solid bronze, decorated with eight dragons marking compass directions. Within each dragon's mouth was a small bronze ball, and beneath sat eight bronze toads. A mechanism within would somehow detect an earthquake occurring in the distance. This would then cause a ball to drop out of one of the eight dragons' mouths. What is fascinating regarding Chang's invention is the fact that no one seems to be able to figure out for a certainty how it worked. One theory is that a thin stick set loosely down the center of the barrel. When an earthquake occurred, a stick would topple over in the direction of the seismic shock. According to legend, when Chang first showed his invention to the emperor, it indicated that a quake had occurred to the west of Luyang, the capital city at the time. A few days later, a messenger from the region arrived reporting that there had indeed been an earthquake there, around the time Chang's machine had indicated. When specialists first realized what the machine was, they struggled to believe that this 2,000-year-old invention could actually work. So, in 2005, scientists in Zhenzhou, China used it to detect several earthquakes. The seismoscope detected all of them. In fact, the data gathered from this 2,000-year-old machine corresponded with that gathered by modern-day seismometers, a marvelous machine left to us by a once ingenious civilization.